please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good afternoon and welcome to Halftime Report. It's 12 noon and after a flat start, the Nifty is struggling a tad bit, so now below the 10,400 mark on the Nifty. The Sensex is down nearly about 100 points and the mid caps in the green so far, a gain of about a half a percent, but that too has lost ground from the top of the day. I am Reema Tendulkar and with me is Nigel D'Souza and we're with you for the next one hour. Hi Nigel. Hi Reema. Well, you know, one sector that's doing pretty well is the pharma space. You take a look at some of those pharma stocks like of Lupin, Dr. Reddy, Sun Pharma. You know, when we have the nifty down close to around uh, 30 points odd and you have these stocks that are trading at least in the green, that's telling you, in fact, maybe that it could be some kind of bottom fishing that uh, you know investors are looking at in some of these stocks. Some of them, they're not very, very cheap, mind you. Like a Sun Pharma, it's factoring in a lot of uh, you know positive outcomes going ahead, and it's still trading at around 22 to around 23 times, factoring in all positives. So just keep that in mind. On the flip side, something like a Lupin, that's trading at around 17 to around 18 times its forward earnings. So we'll have to keep some of these stocks on our mind. They've corrected big time from the peak that we have seen in the last one year odd. First up though, let's run you through all the top stories, then we get... Uh... Well, it's time now to talk about individual stocks then. This is our movers and shakers list and on top of the gaining list is Purvankara. Sonal is here to tell us what the news is. Sonal? Uh, well, Purvankara has been investor favorite in last one year and also today it is buzzing because IDFC has come out with a, a bullish note where they think that Purvankara has uh, more upside to the current uh, market price. Now they think that the company has accelerated uh, the delivery of its projects and also that the company is expecting to realize around 6100 crore rupees and that is 148% over its enterprise value across the launched and completed projects. Also, the company in its affordable housing segment has been able to generate operating profit margin of 35% plus which is higher than a lot of its peers. So that is quite positive for the company. Also, due to the benefits from the low land and the construction uh, uh, equipments that they use, it has been able to do everything at lower cost. Purvankara also has an aggressive land uh, pipeline of around 6.2 million square feet in the affordable housing segment and they're expecting that around 9.5 million square feet of more land they'll be able to deliver by the next few quarters. It is also trading at a discount to its peers and that's why it's the cheapest in the affordable housing segment and that's why the uh, brokerage is bullish on the stock. Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, uh, Sonal. Rima, what about Wipro? That one was trading well in the green. It's come off a tad bit. Uh, what's the news there? Yes, now higher by only about a half a percent. The news is that the company has divested its hosted data services center for about $400 million. This has been sold to a US-based company. Now, it's positive for the company because for one, this data center business itself is getting disrupted on account of cloud technology. A lot of the clients which used it are now migrating on the cloud platform. So it's a business <coughs> which is not doing particularly well. Um, while the company hasn't given us the margins on this particular business, analysts are estimating it to be in single digits, so much lower than the double digit margins that IT services enjoys. So now by divesting it, there is a possibility that the company's overall margins uh, could increase and it could be EPS accretive, at least that's what the analysts believe. Also by shedding, you know, company, the you know, centers which are not doing so well, they can focus on their core digital business. So on the whole, Street is quite, quite happy with the particular development. It's not going to be a financial mover because annual revenues could just be about 3% of the overall revenues as estimated by Morgan Stanley, but marginally EPS secretive. Okay, all right, Rima, thanks so much for that. Going back to Sonal then. Sonal, what's the news in fertilizer stocks? Well, the fertilizer stocks are up and buzzing in trade today because it's a good news as the government has extended uh, the subsidy for the urea, uh, for urea till 2020 and also they have given approval for the direct benefit transfer scheme. So this will allow the urea to be given to the farmers at a subsidized rate. At the same time, it will allow faster transfer of the fertilizer uh, payments to the manufacturers. I spoke to a couple of analysts. They say that it'll reduce the time lag in payments to the manufacturers. So the, uh, it'll reduce the working capital burden on those manufacturers. Plus, the manufacturers with low working capital will be able to benefit the most. So the likes of Madras fertilizers, Nagarjuna fertilizers are up in trade today. 
Okay, thank you very much uh, for that, Sonal. Abhishek, uh, why Sri Ram Transport? Well, Rima, Jefferies has come out with a note on Sri Ram Transport wherein they have a buy recommendation with a target price of about 1,660. So that's an upside of 21% over yesterday's closing price. Now, they believe that the company is expected to have uh, benefits from the uptick in CV cycles. And as we have seen across CV manufacturers, they are showing a growth of 25 to 30%. Despite the rise in bond yields, you know, they expect net interest margins to remain stable. You look at the funding mix of Shiram Transport. They are not only dependent on the NCD market, but they also have uh, you know public deposits or NCDs raised from public which are at a cheaper cost. So credit cost is expected to decline. Uh, management has been guiding that they'll be transferring uh, to 90 days in this March quarter. So after that, uh, Jeffries expect a declining credit cost which will drive their EPS by 34% on a CIGR basis and expansion in ROE by 4.3% therefore valuations appears to be attractive back to you okay all right Abhishek thanks so much for that well HDI is in focus as MADA has alleged its subsidiary of a thousand two hundred crore fraud, uh, fraud in fact we spoke to the promoter of the company earlier today let's hear out what he had to tell us uh, the fraud that MADA has alleged that the company has done uh, this company was to create 3,000 tenements for MADA and hand them over there has been a delay in handing over of the tenements However, the company still has enough assets and has enough to cover up and ensure that the construction of the MADA component will be completed. Now the resolution plan which is being prepared by the RP covers the entire aspect of MADA component, rehab component and every other due which is there from the company will be covered in the resolution plan which will be submitted to the NCLT in the next 10 to 15 days time. Okay, let's move on. NR Agarwal and MMTC are buzzing in trade. Um, Nigel, I'm guessing not for the same reason. Uh, no, not for the same reason, but late last evening we had a BSC announcement coming in from both these two companies. For NR Agarwal, remember the stock is trading at around eight times, uh, you know, eight to nine times, a little less than that actually, its uh, earnings. But the reason uh, that the stock uh, used to not get a better multiple is because the promoter holding is at around 73%, but all of it was pledged. Now, yesterday, as per a BSC filing that they have put out, they are saying that all the pledge has been released. So that's why, in fact, we are seeing a bit of a relief rally. The volume is not very, very high. The stock is up close to around seven and a half percent so that's the reason why we're watching nr agarwal mmtc that stock is up Rima, close to around 15 16 percent we always caution our uh, our uh, investors and our viewers so that's why we just you know giving you the news first they're going to be considering the proposal for issue of bonus shares that's going to be on a meeting that they're going to be holding later in march that's on march 19th itself but just to tell our viewers the stock is trading at around 61 rupees you know what was uh, the nine months eps it's less than one rupee in fact it's less than 50 paise as well it's only 36 paise and uh, all the you know uh, all the holdings is between the promoter as well as LIC so the promoter that's the government of India holds 90 percent and you put LIC together as well in there with around four and a half percent so very very limited free float in the market that's what's helping whoever is you know uh, whoever is buying the stock to push it higher I'll track the delivery very very closely volume is very very high the market capitalization is more than 6,000 crores the free float is only around 600 crores and out of that LIC holds four and a half percent so that's why we're watching both these two stocks NR Agarwal as well as MMTC but um, on that note we'll uh, you know do a quick recap of all the buzzing stocks we have covered in this movers and shaker segment we have Vipro Purankara, Sriram Transport, we have HDIL, Zuari Agro, Madras Fertilizers, NR Agarwal, as well as MMTC. Then from the broader markets, there are a couple of stocks that are doing well. Midcap IT, you pull up Mindtree and NIT Technologies, both those two stocks, they have spiked up in the last few minutes. In fact, NIT Technologies did see a big correction. Anuj was pointing it out earlier this morning, and in fact, he has noted that it's recovered all of those losses. Now, in fact, that stock as well has moved to the high point of the day. So keep an eye out on mid-cap ID stocks. So moving on then, CLSA's Nota is what we got early this morning. They say that India's furniture market is undergoing a major shift with a move towards ready-made uh, furniture and a rising preference for MDF, that's medium density fiber. That's over plywood and that's precisely what's happening in the global markets as well. To talk more about that, what are the opportunities in the MDF segment? We have Mr. Keshav uh, Bajanka the executive director of the company who joins in. Hi, Keshav. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, if you could give us a sense of uh, the MDF plant that you had commissioned in the last few months, it was running at around 50% capacity utilization levels, right? How do you expect it to scale up? 
And in terms of a contribution to your revenues, what can it scale up uh, to in FY19 as well as FY20? Um, you see, MDS for us has done quite well in the first quarter. Um, our quality has been accepted by the market. Um, people are saying that it is uh, perhaps the best quality that is available in the market. And as such, the retail offtake has been very good. Um, in the current financial year, I see a turnover of close to 125 to 130 crores from MDS. And going forward in the next financial year, we definitely be looking at a turnover of 300 crores plus. Okay. okay, so 125 to 130 crore in F518, F519 should be about 300 crore. Uh, hi, Keshav, good afternoon. If you could just give hi. us a sense of how big the MDF market is, what is the current size of that in India? What would the market share of Century Ply be, considering that you are a new entrant into this particular market? And what is the growth of MDF vis a vis, say, the plywood market? Um, in the current year, I would say that the total size of the MDF market would be somewhere around 2,000 to 2,200 crores. On the higher side, since it's been all improved, it could go up to about 2,500 crores. Um, considering the fact that we'd end the year at a turnover of 125 crores plus, I'd be looking at a market share of 5% plus. Uh, going forward, obviously, this market share will increase. The current financial year, we are only operating from uh, Q3, so we only cover two quarters. Uh, going forward, you see, the total size of the MDF market in India today is less than, the production capacity is less than 1 million cubic meters per annum. Whereas in China, the total production capacity is close to 40 million cubic meters per annum. So going forward, I see there's going to be a rapid growth in this market and uh, we should be able to, to uh, gain market share alongside that growth. Growing faster than plywood? And how are the margins um, yeah. looking? And the margins for MDF are higher. I'm talking about EBITDA yeah. margins, primarily because the interest cost and the depreciation cost in MDF is higher. Um, as MDF has a 1 to 1.25 asset turnover ratio at best, whereas plywood has a 1 to 5 asset turnover ratio. Um, having said that, going forward, the growth of the MDF market is likely to be faster because the plywood market is already at close to 18 to 20,000 crores. And internationally, we have seen that MDF is close to 60 to 70 percent the size of the plywood market in most other economies, whereas in India it is close to 10 percent. So definitely the rate of growth of MDF is likely to be faster than that of plywood. How many plants do you have for MDF as of now? Currently we have only one plant. One plant. Going forward, we your have... Plant, your plant is in Punjab, right? Yes, it is in Hoshiarpur, which is towards the northern part of Punjab. Okay, so do you plan on setting up a couple of more plants or just going through a couple of nodes? They're talking about you setting up in Uttar Pradesh as an ASM. Are you looking at that? Is that possible? Do you have the funds for that? Yes. Um, I don't think funding is a challenge for us. Our cash flows are very good at the moment. Uh, in MDF, the cost of transportation is a very high percentage of revenue. As such, geographical proximity will ensure that the margins are better. So we are exploring all possible options. But we have no frozen capex plans at the moment. Okay, so uh, next year, when you are, you know, estimating that your revenues will be three hundred crore, you will be operating at what capacity utilization? Are you hitting a peak over here? No, we will be operating seventy percent plus. I'm sure the realization will be further better, but at the moment, uh, we are anticipating operations at seventy percent plus capacity utilization. All right, um, you're getting uh, to the uh, entire business then. Uh, you're sounding quite positive on the MDF business, but what kind of total revenue growth are you looking at for FY19, uh, Keshav, if you give us a sense of that? And if MDF is going to be growing at a fast clip, then your margins should expand from here, isn't it? Yes, 100%. Our margins are definitely going to expand at the EBITDA level. And uh, going forward in the next financial year, I'm looking at 20% plus growth. Okay. Um, we are looking at close to 20 to 25% growth. And what about margins? I think in the last quarter you did around 17 and a half percent. You can better that number? Yes, definitely. 100, 200 basis points. Some guidance, Keshav. 100 basis points. Okay. okay. Uh, coming back to the NDF uh, business, you're saying that in F519 at 70 percent capacity utilization, you could do close to about 300 crores. So assuming, even in the best case, that you go up to 100 percent capacity utilization, your peak revenues would still be capped at 420, 430 crore, right? So how would you plan to tackle that? Um, you see, an expansion in the current plant is possible. We have created a facility with the provision to expand the capacity by 70 percent. And that expansion would not take more than nine months to implement. On the higher side, maybe 10 months. Um, and going forward, as I told you, we are looking at other options, other locations where we could set up MDF manufacturing units. And we are aggressively exploring the same. So we're going to wait and see how the market pans out. 
for us to set up a new capacity would take close to 12 to 14 months so i think we're in a good position as regards to setting up a new capacity and going forward we're exploring all possible options available to us